Right, today we are looking at the practical questions from the IGCC physics papers. Uh, often these can be uh, short questions or longer planning questions which throw people because they don't know how they're going to ever get five marks. Hopefully we will tackle that today. So the first thing I'm going to introduce are three words that should be your new best friends and they are avoid, parallax, error. Okay. Uh, whenever you asked about how you're going to measure things accurately, you can talk about avoiding parallax error. Okay, uh, parallax error is the error that occurs when you don't read a scale um, exactly at uh, right angles to the scale, uh, and you, you know, it's a bit wonky, essentially. So if you've got uh, a measuring cylinder and you look from here, there's the eye, weird eye. Uh, then you're going to find an odd measurement rather than actually looking from here at eye level, which is where you should be looking. Okay, so parallax error can be avoided. But the great thing about the phrase avoid parallax error is that just writing avoid parallax error is often enough to get you the mark. So even if you can't figure out what parallax error means, it's often worth putting it down when talking about accuracy. The other simple phrase that often comes into play is check foot zero error. Okay, zero error could be something as simple as uh, your ruler not starting at zero at the end of the ruler. Okay, that would be a zero error. So if I rested, if I measured, uh, I don't know, a pencil, there it is, with a ruler, with a rubber, obviously. There's my pencil, straight pencil. Wonderful, that's what pencils look like. Um, then that would look to be about three and a half centimeters long depending on where I've measured it from. But obviously there's a zero error, this bit here. So check for zero error. Or it could be your stop clock doesn't start at zero. Or it could be that you've got a top pan balance with some weighing boat on and you've not zeroed it for the weighing boat. That would be a zero error. That's a top pan balance there. Not a old TV or something. Right. Next bit people will often ask about are variables. So what is the difference between an independent variable and a dependent variable? Uh, the independent one is the one that you control and the dependent one depends on the thing that you control, depends on the independent variable. Um, one person pointed out that the independent variable's got an I in it because I change it, I'm in control of it. Uh, you can take it a step further and say it's the I'm dependent variable, uh, then it starts getting confusing possibly, but it's the one that you change, or I change, you change. Yeah, uh, it's the one that the person doing the experiment is in charge of, and the dependent one, as I said, depends on what happens elsewhere. Okay, so it could be that the resistance of an LDR depends on the amount of light falling on it. Okay, um, the resist, so in terms of how we figure out which one's the independent, which one's the dependent, uh, it's in the phrasing. So investigate how the temperature of a thermistor affects the resistance. And often it's whatever's first, blah, 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 affects whatever second, often the first one is the independent variable. Okay, just watch out, they could rephrase it and say, how is the resistance affected by the temperature? See, mm, sneaky. But in general terms, if you can't figure it out and you've got 30 seconds to go, I would put the first one as the independent variable. Often worth a mark or two. So independent is the one you control, I'm dependent. Um, sometimes, well often, time is the independent variable. So you can think of it as a Tim dependent variable, because uh, that sounds like independent, get it? Um, so for example, distance time graphs, time goes on the bottom because it's an independent variable. Uh, how temperature varies as something's cooling down over time. Um, the time is the thing we're controlling because we're deciding how often we're gonna measure it, for example. Uh, time isn't always the Tim dependent, I mean independent, haha, -ha, variable. Um, it might be that you want to know how long something's going to last, bearing in mind different things. So how long does it take for uh, a lolly to melt in the oven based on the temperature of the oven? So the temperature is the thing you are changing, okay, independent variable, and that how long the ice cream takes to melt depends on the temperature. Yeah, there we go. So uh, originally the video was a bit longer, but the second section uh, on reflection wasn't very good. So I'll do it again at some point and post it soon. Uh, in case you're wondering what an ice lolly in oven looks like, there it is. And uh, yeah, be some more soon. Thanks.